Thanks, Nick, for that weather update. This is On the Spot. My name is Kevin Hill here with Tony Mulvey. We're going to talk about some spot rates, some contract rates. I go back to uh, the, the session, as Zach and Craig just did uh, a few minutes ago, uh, about what's coming down the pipe for, for truckload. Yeah, I mean, you hear that, and it, I mean, it obviously doesn't look good. I mean, you think about what China, the impacts China has on the overall U.S. economy and really the freight economy, right? I think of, I think he estimated it like 18, 19 percent of total truckload volumes come from China. I mean, mm -hmm. you see that drawdown in volume. Guess what? I mean, it's going to impact the trucking market. And that's already you see that spot market's already softening up quite a bit. We do see that, and we have some charts for that. Some research that we did here at Freight Waves Freight Intel Group back in September of 2019. It's a golden oldie, but it's it's really applicable right now, right? We were talking about how the spot market drives the contract market, and this is a survey out to shippers. Uh, and it, the, the first first graph here is how far do spot rates need to fall below contract rates before you start moving loads to the spot market, right? So this is the initial decline. Yeah. I, I think we're down about 25%. Yeah. I right mean, now. It's, we're, I mean, we were at $3.83, that all-in rate, that truckstop.com all-in rate, back in early January, and now we're under $3. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's pretty significant, and you look at where we're at, right? We had another decline last week, right? So those declines have seemed to, to continue that downward movement. Contract rates really haven't declined. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had a little blip at the beginning of the month, but uh, beginning of April, but they've kind of rebounded back to about... Two dollars and ninety-five cents on the drive in side. So I mean, we're talking contract rate, or spot rates, inclusive of fuel, are now under spot rates, or spot rates are under contract rates. They are so, under contract yeah, rates. So right? that's where this this chart comes in. I mean, you look at look mm -hmm. at it, and you see about fifty percent, sixty percent of shippers will move uh, freight into the spot market. When contract rates are down, or spot rates are between that 5 and 15 percent below mm -hmm. contract rates, guess what? We're not that far from that level. We're not that far from that level, but it, it's, there's volatility in, in truckload markets. There's got to be a trend. I mean, there has to be a long-term trend before shippers start really moving, uh, moving their freight into the spot market or rebidding, right? Yeah. Which is uh, two sides of the same coin, right? You're either moving it in the stop. Or in the, you're either moving it into the spot market or you're renegotiating your rates on, on the contract side. So how long does this downturn has to last before you really start seeing activity? And that's our next chart right here. And what we're seeing is one to three months. Yeah, and, and really, I mean, you kind of think April. I mean, you saw March. We saw that decline mm -hmm. in spot rates, but they were still pretty well above contract rates. Well, now it's kind of, April kind of flipped that on its head, yes. right? So that's really kind of that first indication. But I mean, we're coming up, you think we're now into May. We're yeah. coming up on that 60-day level. We are, level. very close to the 60-day level, yeah. right? So that one to three months that we see right there, about 45% uh, of shippers, and you throw in the other 5%. So half of shippers are starting to move things. And that, that one to three months, we're about 60 days in. Mm -hmm. I think May, the, the big story, is going to be uh, a lot of shippers going directly to the spot market and a lot of rebidding of rates. Yeah. There's going to be lanes that need to be re rebid, and if you're in the freight market, if you're uh, asset-based or non-asset-based, 3PL, you're going to see your customers start coming back, your shipper customers start coming back wanting to uh, renegotiate. You're going to see some of that move into the spot market. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we talked last week on with Sonar with Kyle Jepson of Emerge talking about these shorter bid cycles kind of becoming mm -hmm. the norm. And I mean, this, well, shifting to into the spot markets more instant but I mean we have seen these more mini bids pop up just given the market volatility it kind of works we talked about it, it works on the way up and it works on the way down I mean it, it really it's kind of you don't think of it that way but it really does I mean you start bidding carriers start they've got to keep their trucks moving they care shippers have kind of felt like they've been getting the short end of the stick the past couple years. It's been tough to find capacity, right? Yeah. It's been tough 
to find capacity. They've been paying higher rates, but yeah, you see it on the upside too. We don't have those charts in here uh, today, but it's the same going up, right? Yeah. So what we found two years ago, almost to the, the, the date, uh, where the, the spot market just went off the wall up and you saw the rebidding process. So you're seeing that. So how much freight do they move into the spot market? That's the next question here. And we'll throw up that slide right here to, to, to see that. And what we find is that's about 30%. So it's just <laughs> under one third of the freight. So if you're looking at a 20 to 25% decline, let's say 15 to 25% decline in the spot market, uh, by three months, 90 days in, you're gonna see uh, just, just under a third of a freight either go into the spot market or be renegotiated. Yeah, and that's a pretty significant amount. I it mean, is significant you amount, start yeah. moving one in three third, thirds. Yeah, you start moving a third of your freight into the spot market, like, it's, I mean, the volume on the spot side will be there, but those rates are a lot more dynamic. They're a lot more, they're, a lot, they're subject to that volatility that mm -hmm. we've seen, right? And really, it can, like we talked about, it kind of works its way down, right? That mm -hmm. the carriers start bidding against each other on the way down, right? They were like, uh, it is a race to the bottom, yeah. right? A rat race to the bottom. And that's what you see in every down market. Mm -hmm. uh, it's frustrating if you're out there selling. Uh, if you're, uh, as, uh, again, if you're asset based or non asset based, it is frustrating, but it's the cyclical part of, uh, of trucking. You just have to live through it. You just went through two years of a boom year, uh, boom years, I should say, and, and now you're looking at a down market cycle. You have to avoid that race to the bottom. That's what we talk about on Put That Coffee Down quite a bit. We're going to be talking about it more and more as the weeks go on because I, I've been in that cycle, that, that race to the bottom. Don't want to be in that cycle again. And it, you have to prepare yourself and build value in other ways. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, this, is, this is where those relationships and that service metric kind of comes into effect too, yes. right? We, we've seen it. If you didn't do your job, like if you weren't, if you're just getting trucks, trucks. Yeah. right? The, the value of just getting trucks over the last two years was very high. There's a great premium attached to that. We're going into an environment where getting a truck is, is almost no value because yeah. anyone else out there can get a truck. Yeah, for sure. And we'll bring up our next chart. It'll show these rates that we're talking about. This truckstop.com uh, dry van all-in rate per mm -hmm. mile down to $2.90. You look at the van contract rate, that kind of upward movement that we've seen, we haven't seen the downside of that, but at $2.95 per mile, right? And that's just the baseline haul rate. That's not, so it doesn't include fuel like the, so, yeah. I mean, you're seeing impact, I mean, you're seeing these rates I mean, this is probably even a larger gap, right? We're talking five cents here, but that includes mm -hmm. fuel. You take fuel out, and that gap's maybe even wider. I mean, yeah. it's a lot wider than the five cents. It is a lot wider. It's going to be interesting to see over the, the, the course of the summer. Uh, you know, you're talking about Emerge, talking with Emerge last week. I, I talked with Andrew Leto on Put That Coffee Down a couple weeks ago. Uh, just, just think about the technology uh, available in the RFP, RFQ bidding cycle. Uh, process has, has changed dramatically over five years, but since, since pandemic, it's, it's much more nimble now. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, if that technology is thrown into place to, to be able to do these shorter duration or, or shorter length uh, of bid cycles as we're looking at the spot market and contract markets uh, kind of breaking down in, in real time. Yeah, and like Craig and Zach talked about, I mean, you're about to see a decline in volumes. I mean, based on mm -hmm. what we've seen in container volumes out of China, once that translates to the US, I mean, it's, it just acts like another catalyst to see these spot rates go down even further. It does, you know, it is a, it's a huge catalyst too. And I do remember back uh, during the, the tariffs and the, the, the pull forward, uh, it was a dramatic effect. Uh, when, when that happened in early 2019. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens uh, going forward. Yeah, for sure. And, and obviously we keep up with this and we talk about earnings season and things like that, kind of shifting gears just a little. We've got less than a minute here, but we've seen record numbers. Yeah. But the problem with earnings is they're backward looking, right? A lot, mm -hmm. of, you look at back at that chart and when 
rates really started their acceleration downward was really at the end of the first quarter. Doesn't really impact earnings. Well, it doesn't. You have record quarters uh, almost uniformly, uh, uh, near record or record breaking performances. There's something called a peak. Yep. And that's usually when a, a peak happens, when everyone's breaking records, everyone's doing great. You see peaks, and we'll see that in the first quarter. Second quarter, I, I think, is going to be much more interesting. But that's all the time we have right now. We're going to take a quick break and be right back with Freight Waves now.